Today's video is brought to you by Candid. Hey brother! Ben, probably the biggest mystery surrounding the show Avatar The Last Airbender after it finished was the fate of Zuko and Azula's mom, Ursa. I mean, a couple of weeks ago when I asked you guys on Twitter if you had any questions about Avatar, this was hands down the most requested question. And I totally get why. They totally leave you on a cliffhanger. You're like, wait, is there a season four? It just said, the end. And then they have a brand new series, Legend of Korra, and right out of the gate they're like, <laughs> no, we're still not telling you. It's like they're literally trolling you. But don't you worry guys, today we finally get to the bottom of it. Guys, before we dive on in, I need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Candid. All right, let's talk Zuko. Firebender, sure. Spectacular character arc, absolutely. But above all else, he has that one key trait that truly defines him, his glittering smile. And while I'm sure Zuko benefits from the careful animators who draw his face, there is also a way that you too can change your smile. You too can be just like Zuko, minus the firebending. Unfortunately, as far as I know, there aren't any breaks throughs in that department yet. But if there are, you can rest assured you will hear about it here first. Maybe. I'm not sure I can quite make that promise. Candid makes clear aligners that are comfortable, removable, and best of all, completely invisible. Meaning you can be taking steps towards having a brand new smile without anyone ever knowing. And Candid can be done entirely from home, meaning you don't even have to venture out and go to a doctor's office. Like, I don't know if you tried to have your teeth cleaned lately while you're wearing your mask during the pandemic, but it's like, it's really hard for them to clean it through that. Using their startup kit, you make a mold of your teeth and then working with a licensed orthodontist, you develop your treatment plan in the form of aligner sets that move your teeth gradually in two week increments. And the great news is that most people begin to see results in just six months and at a fraction of the cost of traditional braces. So if you guys are looking to make a change to your smile for a limited time, you can head over to candidco.com SCB and use promo code SCB to get $75 off. Again, that is candidco.com SCB use promo code SCB to get $75 off and start having a straighter smile today. Link is in the description down below. So quick warning, this video will contain spoilers for Avatar The Last Airbender, but if you're watching this video, I'm guessing you've already watched that. So more specifically, it will contain spoilers for the graphic novel, The Search, which I totally recommend reading if you can get your hands on it. Like seriously, for something that came out in 2013, you think it'd be really easy to just go online and buy a copy or like get one from the store, but it's not. I have had such a difficult time finding a physical copy of this book, which is split into three parts, by the way. So it's really three books. I thought I had found a copy. I ordered it several weeks ago. It's still not here. I'm not holding my breath. I had to settle for a digital copy Pfft, for now. Anyway, I only bring this up because the answer to this question isn't really a theory. I mean, the answer exists out there. It's just kind of hard to find. As such though, I'm sure there are other videos that exist and already explain this. I have personally not watched any of them. Thanks for choosing this one. Okay, so let's lay out the mystery. We are first introduced to this question in the episode Zuko Alone, which is hands down one of my favorite episodes. But in it, we get to see lots of very interesting flashbacks into Zuko and Azula's childhood. And it's pretty much what you'd expect. Zuko is sweet. Azula is the literal worst. What is wrong with that child? But this is also the first time we get to meet their mother, Ursa. And although we still don't get to see his face yet, their father, Fire Lord Ozai, the big bad of the whole show, does make a few appearances as well. Except at this point, he is not quite the Fire Lord yet. He's still just a prince and not even the prince who is next in line for the throne. First in line should have been Iroh since he's the eldest brother and overall best character on the show. I mean, let's be real. Every time he's on screen, I'm like, man, I want to go make a cup of tea. And then I remember like, Jay, when is the last time you have ever successfully made a decent cup of tea? And I'm like, never. <laughs> this tea is nothing more than hot leaf juice. Oh, I have so much to learn. By the way, even though I'm not good at making it, we have tea available at carlinbrotherscoffee.com. Ginger peach, it's delicious. When someone else makes it though, just don't let me make it. But this hurdle, Ozai not being next in line for Fire Lord, is really where the mystery begins. 
Mountains. We often hear the story about how Iroh failed to conquer Ba Sing Se, but now finally we're getting the full story. Basically, after 600 days of siege, he finally breaks through the wall, and even though victory is almost at hand, his son, Lu Ten, dies in battle. At which point, Iroh, who is devastated and distraught, pulls his troops back and surrenders the fight. Now, most people would probably take some time to mourn the loss of their nephew and console their brother, but not Ozai. He sees this as an opportunity, and so he approaches his father, Fire Lord Azulon, with a request. And the request is to forego Iroh's birthright as next in line and instead give it to Ozai. I don't know why I pointed at myself. I'm not nah, him. I'm not him, no. <laughs> His argument being that since Iroh has no heirs, the bloodline is going to end with him, so Ozai should become Fire Lord because he has two heirs. Now, Azulon is not a great guy or general. I mean, let's be real. He's been in charge for the majority of the Hundred Year War and has made like zero progress. What are you doing with your time, man? Be better at conquering. Or don't, I mean. It's better for everyone if you're not, but I'm just saying. But at the very least, he's not Ozai levels of bad, and he takes serious issue with his second son leveraging the death of his grandson to take the birthright of his eldest son. Did I get that right? Yeah, I think so, but don't worry, it gets worse. As punishment for even requesting this, Azulon tells Ozai that Ozai is now going to have to murder his firstborn child so that he will understand the same pain Iroh was going through. Dad's going to kill you. Really, he is. Grandfather said Dad's punishment should fit his crime. You must know the pain of losing a firstborn son. What is wrong with that child? See, I told you, it got worse. But don't worry, it gets worser. Sorry, I feel like I'm using a really upbeat, positive voice and this is really bad news, but I don't know, I'm just not good at giving bad news. Now, most fathers would be like, uh, no, sorry, I will in fact not be murdering my son. Uh, sorry, dad. But Ozai does not bat an eyelid at all. He's like, well, if I don't do what the Fire Lord says, that would be treason. Bring me Zuko. See? Worser. But this is where Zuko's mom steps in in a very vague way. We know what's supposed to happen, but instead we see her show up in the middle of the night at Zuko's bed, tell him goodbye, and to never forget who he is. And that is the last time he sees her. No explanation is ever given to the audience about what her fate is, but to me, the conclusion they want you to draw is that she made some sort of deal with Ozai and said, no, kill me instead, spare Zuko. And that might have been a fine explanation to just go on believing, except they just keep on teasing you with the answer. I mean, it is the last thing you see Zuko say to his father in prison. Where is my mother. There is a scene during the Day of Black Sun where, oh, sorry, I forgot to film this part of the office, so this is uh, Luke's playroom. Cool, right? There is a scene during the Day of Black Sun where Ozai alludes to her fate. So she's alive, perhaps. But it is hard to know how honest he is being here. I mean, for one, he is clearly trying to bait Zuko into attacking him. And this scene is cutting back and forth simultaneously to a scene with Azula, who is also trying to bait Aang into attacking her. You're trying to keep us here and waste all our time. Um, right, I think your friend just said that, genius. And there can be no doubt that the parallelness of these two scenes is also supposed to represent how similar Azula is to her father and vice versa. And not for nothing, but Azula literally brings up her tremendous capacity for lying. I'm a pretty good liar. I am a 400 foot tall purple platypus bear with pink horns and silver wings. Okay, you're good, I admit it. So yeah, it's hard to know how honest Ozai is being here, but he definitely plants the seed of doubt in Zuko's mind. And now back to the set. And then in the literal first episode of Legend of Korra, Jinora is asking Katara what happened to Zuko's mom, and she's about to tell her, and then Iki interrupts. <laughs> what happened to Zuko's mom? Well, Jinora, it's an incredible tale. Brendan, you look old. How old are you? 
you. Second children, am I right? What is wrong with that child? And that's it. That's what the show gives you. A big old tease for what maybe was gonna be a season four at one point, and then a big old slap in the face in episode one of the sequel series, which Legend of Korra actually came out in 2012, so it was still a year before the answer was finally revealed in The Search, which again, ironically, I'm having a really hard time searching for. But anyway, in The Search, we are introduced to a young Ursa who has just landed the lead role in an upcoming production of Love Amongst the Dragons as the Dragon Empress. And she is just so excited to tell her boyfriend, Ikem, that she has landed this role because hopefully he's gonna be in the play as well. And actually, I kind of love that this is the play they're doing because it's a really, really nice tie-in and Easter egg for something Zuko says when he and Team Avatar go see a play by the Ember Island players. My mother used to take us to see them. They butchered love amongst the dragons every year. Ah, you see, because she took them to see it every year because it reminded her of her old life, which she was forced to leave. Actually, another really fun Easter egg for this play happens in the Netflix show called The Dragon Prince, which was written by the same people who wrote Avatar. But you can see one of the characters in the show reading Love Amongst the Dragons right here. Honestly, that show is super good if you haven't discovered it yet. And if you like Avatar, it is full of little Easter eggs like that. The main character is voiced by the same guy who does Sokka. This guy, whose name or role I won't reveal, is voiced by the same guy who did Ko, the face stealer. You know, that like creepy centipede dude who keeps changing his face. There's even a very sneaky boomerang reference. Something so strangely familiar. Boomerang? Boomerang! You do always come back! But of course there would be. I mean, those jokes always come back around, am I right? Oh, <laughs> hey oh! Anyway, Ursa is forced to marry Ozai because she is the granddaughter of the last avatar, Roku. And the fire sages have told Azulon that if the granddaughter of the avatar marries his son, the prince of the fire lord, they will produce a truly powerful child. Which to be fair, is very true. But her boyfriend, Ikem, does not take this very well and heads into a place known as the Forgetful Valley where he's never heard from again. Which, of course, you don't believe. We're definitely going to hear from him again. But fast forward a few years, and we are back at the point where Ozai has agreed to kill Zuko, and Ursa has stepped in to be like, no, please don't do that. Our original assumption was that she had traded her life for his, and that's somewhat true, but she doesn't die. Instead, she offers to make a colorless, odorless poison that Ozai can use to kill his father and become Fire Lord himself, if he agrees to spare Zuko. And Ozai accepts this deal on the condition that Ursa agrees to leave the capital forever and never return and leave the children behind as collateral. But he definitely does not want her around knowing that she has the capability to make such a deadly and powerful and undetectable poison that might then be used against him. Again, I keep pointing to myself, no. But fun freaking fact about the poison she makes for him. Okay, so way back in the episode, The Cave of the Two Lovers, we see Iroh pondering the repercussions of making tea out of a particular rare flower that he has found. You're looking at the rare white dragon bush. Its leaves make a tea so delicious it's heartbreaking. That Oh, it's the white jade bush, which is poisonous. Well, do you see this flower Ursa is using to make the poison? Uh, I went ahead and looked up what the white jade bush flower looked like, and boom, there it is. Ah, uh, this is such a seriously deep cut and cool callback. Although, I should note, Iroh does make a tea out of the flower, and he does get a rash, and it obviously wasn't the white jade bush, so even though he knew what the effects of it were, I don't think his, like, botany identification skills are really all that good. These are pakui berries known to cure the poison of the white jade plant. That or makaole berries that cause blindness. We're not taking any more chances with these plants. Anyway, Ozai kills his father and Ursa travels back to her old hometown where she quickly meets the guy who's now in charge of the old playhouse where she used to audition. They get to talking and he quickly asks her to breakfast where he then reveals that dun dun dun! It is he, I can! Only now he looks different. What? 
How do? Well, as it turns out, in the Forgetful Valley, there lives this giant spirit known as the Mother of Faces, who just so happens to be the mother of Ko, the face dealer, wouldn't you know? The Mother of Faces appears just once every season and randomly at one of four specific lakes. But if you happen to be there when she shows up, she will offer a single favor to a single human. But mainly what they're asking the Mother of Faces for is for a new face, which is how Akem got himself a new face and was able to give himself a new name as well. And once Akem is done explaining all of this to Ursa, she too decides, wow, if I got a new face, then I could travel back to the capital and maybe every now and then I would actually still get to see Zuko and Azula. Oh, <laughs> pretty sneaky. But then when she finally meets the spirit, she does like a complete 180 and decides that not only does she want a new face, but that also she wants a new mind and to forget everything to do with her old life at the royal palace, including her children. Worserer again! Instead, she opts for a very simple, completely new life with her old flame, who the Mother of Faces says she will remember. But my goodness, I mean, I know Ursa is supposed to be a much more kind-hearted character in that she did save Zuko, but in the process, she abandons her children, hands her husband a murder weapon for him to use to kill his father and then chooses to completely forget about her children at all. Ugh. But anyway, guys, I think we're going to end the story right there. There is a very little bit left that still happens, but I'll leave that part mysterious in case you want to read through the story yourself. Plus, I will say I have also intentionally left out a lot of the subplots happening alongside the story, so it is still definitely worth a read if you want to try and find it. As long as I find it before you, because I've been looking longer, and it's only fair. But there you go. That is the answer to what actually happened to Zuko's mom. Personally, I thought it was a really fun story and I thought it opened the door to all sorts of crazy face changing plot twisty stuff. If that's the kind of direction they decide to go in with the live action Netflix show whenever that comes out. Like, are they continuing the story of Aang or are they just recreating The Last Airbender with people now? But as ever, if you have any other questions about Avatar The Last Airbender that you'd like us to take a look at or dive into, let me know in the towel section down below. Hey, if unlike me, you are good at brewing tea, then maybe you should head over to Carlin Brothers Coffee .com, where we have tea for sale. I recommend the ginger peach. Thanks as always for watching today's video, guys. Don't forget to ding that bell and leave a like on it if you haven't already so you don't miss any future Avatar content from us. If you want to see why Ty Lee is actually an air nomad, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, until next week, I will see you in the Life Brothers.